Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to our daily devotions for today, Thursday the 7th of May. We begin our time together with our opening prayer. Let's pray together. Almighty and loving God, we thank you for the assurance we have that you are always with us, that in you we will find help and strength in times of trouble, that whatever we face, you will always be there to reach out and save us. Great is your faithfulness from one generation to another. We thank you that you are present, not only here, but everywhere, that no one is outside of your love and no place beyond your concern. Great is your faithfulness from one generation to another. We thank you that you hold firmly to us, even when we try and struggle from your grasp. Great is your faithfulness from one generation to another. We thank you that your mercy never runs dry, despite our repeated faithlessness. Great is your faithfulness from one generation to another. We thank you that your patience is never exhausted, no matter how many times we let you down. Great is your faithfulness from one generation to another. So now we worship you. You alone are God, worthy of all praise and honour. Great is your faithfulness from one generation to another. We come with gladness and with thanksgiving, with joy and with celebration. Great is your faithfulness from one generation to another. We come in awe and in wonder, in hope and in faith. Great is your faithfulness from one generation to another. We come to make our confession to offer our petition and to bring our intercessions. Great is your faithfulness from one generation to another. Almighty and loving God, take our faith, weak though it is, kindle the sparks of life within us and fan a new flame of love within our hearts. And so may we set out into each new day with renewed purpose, resolve to live and work for you in the assurance that you are with us now and always. Great is your faithfulness from one generation to another. Thanks be to God. Amen. Chapter 7 When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this they covered their ears, and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city, and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, Do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep.
Psalm 34 Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the broken-hearted, and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Our closing prayer for today is all about love and loving. Let's pray together. Gracious God, you call us to love you with all our hearts and minds and soul. You challenge us to love our neighbour as ourselves. You tell us through Christ that the whole law is summed up in one commandment, to love. It all sounds so easy, so straightforward, but we know in reality it is so very difficult. Gracious God, forgive us the feebleness of our love. Too often we love only ourselves, our every thought of our own welfare, our own ends, our own esteem, our own pleasures. Gracious God, forgive us the feebleness of our love. Too often we reserve our love for the exclusive few, our families, our closest friends, our fellowship. Gracious God, forgive us the feebleness of our love. And too often we are forgetful of others, indifferent to them, even at times hostile. Gracious God, forgive us the feebleness of our love. Yet worse than that, even when we think we love, we are sometimes deceiving ourselves. We are impatient of others' mistakes. We are slow to give help when it is needed, especially if it means putting ourselves out. We are envious of others' good fortune, more concerned with our own well-being than that of those around us. Gracious God, forgive us the feebleness of our love. We are careless in what we say and self-centred in the way we think, ever prone to take offence, bearing grievances and harbouring resentment, even distorting and deceiving in order to get our own way, or to avoid facing truths we would rather ignore. Gracious God, forgive us the feebleness of our love. All too easily our love is destroyed, Instead of holding fast through difficulties, we automatically find ourselves believing the worst, feeling ourselves betrayed, giving up on love instead of working to nurture it. Gracious God, forgive us the feebleness of our love. Lord of all, it is hard to love, especially when love is thrown back in our faces or when those we are faced by seem unlovely, or when love is costly and demanding. We confess we wonder at times whether love is the right way at all, or simply a naive illusion, a pleasant but foolish fantasy. Gracious God, forgive us the feebleness of our love. But you have shown us the way of love, made flesh in Christ. 
love that came into our world despite rejection, that reaches out to us in all our unloveliness, that was willing to pay the highest price and make the ultimate sacrifice. And through that love, you offer life, not only to us, but to all people. A love that can one day be free from all the things that divide and hurt and frighten us. Gracious God, forgive us the feebleness of our love. So now we pray, take the little love that we have, nurture, deepen and expand it until we have learned what love really means, until your love runs through our hearts, until love is all in all.